Please join in the call to worship, followed by the hymn of praise. God has given us this beautiful earth and all that grows and runs upon it. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God has given us breath to live and spirit to sing. Thanks be to God. God has gathered us into a community of care and worship. Let us worship God with love, thanksgiving, and praise.
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Eternal God, we gather as your people to worship you. By your spirit, break the bonds that hold our minds captive to the petty concerns of our lives that we may know the freedom of new possibilities. Quiet the din of our distracted spirits that we may hear your gentle voice calling to us. Transform our very lives that we may go forth from this hour with deeper commitment to doing your will with a firm assurance of your presence. Amen. <laughs> The scripture this morning is taken from the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, good morning, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. 
Um, it's time for me to do children's moments today. And I heard a word multiple times through this service that um, I wanna make sure that the kids who are listening understand, right? Because um, it took me a long time to figure this out. I think I was a grown up before I figured this part out, which is kind of silly, but the word sacrifice, right? Sacrifice. So I think we kind of understand sacrifice in the Bible. They talk about, you know, putting things on the altar. It's usually food, which I never really understood because it seems to me like you really needed that food when there were a lot of hungry people. Right. And I learned later that the priest would, when somebody would offer a sacrifice on the altar, the priest would accept that sacrifice and then it would, the priest would go and give it to hungry people. So that made a little more sense. Um, but the thing that it took me a long time to figure out is sacrifice is not just when you give something, right? So we give things all the time. We give gifts, um, we smile, we hug, we give hugs you know, to people. Those are all good gifts. But the word sacrifice, we use that when you gave up something that was important to you. Right. So it's not just that you gave, you gave something that hurt you or was a loss to you. So I don't know if we have any baseball players listening. I'm pretty sure we do. But in baseball, there's something called the sacrifice. Right. <laughs> and what that means is there was a runner. Maybe there was a runner on first base and the batter came to the plate. And the job of the batter was to just get a hit that moves the runner over even if the batter gets out, sometimes they make it to base, but the intention is to give yourself up so that the runner moves forward, right? So again, it's this concept that it's not just enough to give, it's to give something that you care about, right? Give something that hurts you. So remember I said that I didn't learn this until I was an adult, right? Um, you know, you sort of the word sacrifice, yeah, 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 I, I kind of know what it means. Well, when I was um, a young mom with a couple of kids um, at that point, and my own mother was sick and my company was being bought and there was a lot of turmoil going on. And um, my husband was taking a different job that was going to involve a lot of travel, right? I had a job that I loved. And I decided I feel bad about being a mom who doesn't spend enough time with my young children and doesn't have enough time to go help my mother who was sick. So I decided that I would stay home, right? Stay home with my kids. And I very willingly made that, right? But I never understood what sacrifice meant until I realized, wait a minute, I love being home with my kids. I love being less guilty, you know, being with my mom, but I miss my job. And that's when it kind of clicked that we talk about sacrifice. We often say, oh, will we sacrifice this, you know, so that we could save money for vacation or college or something, right? But we don't talk about what it meant to give up the thing, how it felt to lose the thing. So why am I talking about sacrifice? Well, today is Veterans Day. I went and found my poppy, right? <laughs> and when I think of Veterans Day, we often think of, you know, being really appreciative for what veterans have done for us. But we don't often think about it in terms of the sacrifice that they made. All the times that people who have served have spent time away from their families. They've missed birthdays. Some of them have missed um, the birth of their own children, right? That's a huge sacrifice. So I just want us to remember that the word sacrifice is something that we shouldn't just toss around, right? It's not something that um, doesn't have meaning. It has a lot of meaning. So when we're supposed to make a living sacrifice of ourselves, a holy and living sacrifice of ourselves, right? That's asking for something that's important to give. So I want us to remember that. I want us to keep that in mind. I don't want you to be miserable, right? God doesn't want you to be miserable, but God does want you to be miserable. Well, 
Okay, I'm gonna say that again. God does want you to be willing to give up things that hurt when it's the right thing to do. Okay, let's bow our heads, say a little prayer. All right, dear God, please teach us to be open in our hearts and in our minds to what sacrifice means so that we can be willing to make ourselves a sacrifice to do the good in the world that is needed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Let us be in a moment of prayer. Holy God, by the power of you, your spirit, we are each offered gifts to share for the continuing of Jesus' work in the world. We thank you for your spirit who activates those gifts and blesses us with those gifts so that we in turn might bless the world. So as we have gathered here today, we know that your spirit is with us. And I would pray, oh God, that you might take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Let our ears, our minds, and our hearts be open so that what your spirit offers this day um, might help us to grow in unity with each other and in service of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. So many members, one body. Each of us is a uniquely gifted servant of Christ. Together as individuals, we are brought together and we form one uniquely gifted body of Christ, a congregation we know as Fairhaven. 
How will we use the gifts that God has given to fulfill our mission of loving God and loving our neighbor? Paul writes to the Romans, asking the Christian followers there to present themselves as a living sacrifice. So Christians today, as Christians today, we offer ourselves to the power of the Spirit to be renewed, to be transformed. We place ourselves at God's disposal to be used to do God's work in the world. It is interesting to me that Paul lifts up, one of the first examples he lifts up, um, in this passage is the renewing of our minds. And of course, this is a favorite verse for those of us whose relationship with God um, began with and continues to be nurtured by intellectual pursuits. A strong mind allows, uh, may allow us to discern God's presence in our midst and to see God working um, in, in, the li- in, in and around the world. A strong mind allows us to discern and understand our our own gifts and talents and skills and where we might engage them for building God's kingdom. A strong mind helps us to understand when the sin of pride creeps in and allows us to think too highly of our abilities. A strong mind enables us to contemplate where absolute knowledge ends. And faith begins. As our mind is renewed and transformed by the power of the Spirit, our mind aligns with the mind of Christ. So Paul goes on in this passage to name many more gifts. The gift of prophecy and ministry, teaching, preaching, generosity, leadership, diligence, compassion, and cheerfulness. He reminds the Romans that these gifts come from the spirit of the living God. The spirit of God who breathes life into creation and continues to breathe life into these bodies, into you and into me. Paul has that long list of gifts, but that list of gifts is by no means exhaustive, and I don't think he meant it to be. When he's writing to the Corinthians or the Ephesians, he also writes about the spiritual gifts that that God offers. And those are different lists. Our task is to discern what gifts we have been blessed with by the power of God. And so what are your spiritual gifts? What are your talents? What are your skills? If you're a singer, can you help us to praise and worship God? If you are a writer, Perhaps you can help us to craft liturgy or strengthen our communications within the the family of Fairhaven. If you are someone who is gifted at healing, you might be able to help offer parish nursing or be able to help listen to someone who is going through an emotional crisis and point them in a new direction. If you're a teacher, uh, you could help people to build up their knowledge of Christ. Perhaps you're a carpenter or an electrician. Will you help make some repairs to the church or help plan a mission team to rebuild someone's home? Maybe you're a visionary. You're someone who can help see the possibilities in front of us and God's drawing us into those possibilities, into the future. Or maybe you're a leader to help plan Um, how we get from where we are today to where the vision so that we can fulfill the vision that is offered. Maybe you're someone who's passionate about justice and you will help us to keep focused on equity and righteousness in our community and in the world. Or perhaps you're a visual artist or someone really wonderful with crafts and you help to beautify this space and our property or our visual um, encounters with God. And I know plenty of people in this congregation and out of the congregation who have this deep connection with God and are able to pray in a powerful way. And so can you, can you pray for us each and every day and undergird all the ministry that we do with the power of prayer? Now, I didn't count up how many things I just listed there, but even that list isn't complete either. There are as many gifts and skills and combinations of gifts 
as there are uniquely gifted people of God. Which of your gifts will you offer in ministry today? The gifts that we recognize in ourselves and the gifts that we share have shared in previous years may be different from those gifts that we share today. Or the gifts that we are currently sharing for the work of God today may be different from the gifts we are called to share tomorrow. As we pray, as we grow, as we learn, the Spirit may activate new talents in us. And at times, the situations of our lives and the circumstances of the community and the world may cause us to reassess our gifts. We're called to use them. Perhaps you have welling up within your heart a message that needs to get told. And so you're hearing that call to preach or to go tell the story of Jesus and to evangelize. Or maybe you're someone who's witnessing the struggles of aging parents who desire to stay in their home. And you're ready to organize a work team to go help repair and clean and paint homes of similarly um, minded people. A prayerful discerning mind allows us to know where we are being called in a new way. So where might God be asking you to serve in a new avenue of ministry? Pastor Carrie Jo Berhurst tells the story of um, a visit that she made to a religious order a number of years ago. And she said, I realized that they required their members to spend significant time intentionally working in areas outside of their expertise. Because at first I got really upset that somebody with a skilled financial background was now working in the laundry and doing such a menial task. But she reassessed that. You see, Working that way not only helps to meet the needs of the community. What is the biggest need? Well, maybe the biggest need is to make sure the laundry gets done. And so whatever free hands are available need to go do the laundry. But operating away from our biggest expertise breaks that reliance on the habit of specialization and identifying ourselves or other people primarily by the gifts that we have. It helps us to uh, keep ourselves humble. And it strengthens our reliance on the spirit to provide the energy and the resources and the abilities to provide as needed. I think when we use a variety of our gifts, it helps to build the community because we're forced to work together and to rely on each other. Of course, some of this kind of um, situation happens naturally in church communities. It's not just um, the monks and, and the intentionally religious communities that do that. See, there are always roles to be filled. And we don't always have an expert in the membership to fill that role. So we take on positions and tasks which need to be done. We offer ourselves as a living sacrifice and we come together as humble servants, relying on God and one another as we strive to work for Christ's kingdom. Christian community requires that each one of us offer ourselves to God. The Spirit of God takes our offerings and molds and transforms us into the body of Christ. And that's the key. We are one in Christ. As the body of Christ, we are one in Christ. And I really love Paul's metaphor of the human body as, um, as an image for Christian community. He develops that more in uh, the letter to the Corinthians, of course. But his point is the same here. We need each other. We need to... We need each other giving of ourselves to function well as a community. We are one body in Christ. The spirit draws individuals together with all of our unique gifts and our quirky personalities. 
so that together we're able to do the work of ministry. It doesn't mean that we think all alike, we act alike, or we serve alike. One of the gifts of Fairhaven United Methodist Church is we are a diverse group of people, intentionally so. We welcome people from all cultural racial, and racial backgrounds. We welcome people of all sexual orientations and gender identities. We welcome all people as a child of God. Our members come from a variety of economic situations and educational backgrounds. We are Republican and Democrat, moderate, liberal, and conservative. It is obvious that we love each other and that we care about each other. It doesn't mean that we don't occasionally get on each other's nerves or disappoint one another or get angry with one another. But we seem to be able to find a way to forgive one another and to build relationships that are centered on Christ's love as we compassionately support one another and help each other persevere through our sufferings and through these circumstances of life. Now, since we've been worshiping online, I haven't had this happen too uh, recently, but prior to this, prior to the pandemic, when we had visitors who would come and be with us, they would notice and they would comment on our unity in the midst of our diversity. A statement of admiration um, that was offered in the early church was, oh, how they love each other. Well, that could very easily be a statement about Fairhaven. We are living out that example here in the 21st century. Oh, how they love each other. The question for today and in the days ahead is how will we offer ourselves individually and as a body of Christ to continue Christ's ministry in Darnstown and beyond. As we continue to be in ministry during this corona pandemic, I pray that we will continue to commit ourselves to responding to the needs of the community as they are presented before us. And at the same time, we will continue to strive to strengthen our relationships with God and our fellowship with one another. Right now, we're seeking creative ideas of how we can worship and study together, even as we're confined to virtual ways of meeting. I'm looking specifically to find a way to hold a confirmation class in the midst of a pandemic. And then once we're able to reopen this building and meet face to face again for meetings and, in, and studies and groups, I'm calling on the visionaries and the, and the strategic planners to come together and discern with our minds and our hearts to find how God is calling us to make disciples of Jesus Christ through the ministries that we are doing today and the ministries that we can do in the future. And then who are the storytellers among us and the witnesses who will share how our unique history as a congregation and our identity as Fairhaven can be used to help a community and a nation heal in the midst of our deep divisions. God's gift of the spirit activates our individual gifts for ministry and unifies us as the body of Christ. May our minds, our hearts, and our lives be transformed so that we might make a full commitment and a sacrifice to serve Christ together. Amen. I invite you um, to be, actually, yeah, I invite you to be uh, in a time of prayer to open your hearts to the joys and concerns that are before us. Um, I will, of course, lift up our nation, a nation that is deeply divided, even as we now have uh, a, an apparent winner in our presidential election. 
Um, we will pray that the Spirit brings unity and draws us together, and I will begin our prayer time with a prayer for healing our way forward, which is a prayer specifically um, about bringing this nation together. Uh, but what are the other joys and concerns that need to be lifted up this day? Oh God, we come this day as one family in Jesus Christ, unified by the power of your spirit, ready to serve your people. We ask you to continue speaking to our hearts and using us to reach out beyond these walls, to not ask questions about um, beliefs or positions, but just to see people as your beloved children and to fulfill the needs that are before us. Let there be peace on earth, O God, and let it begin with us. Help us to heal any divisions that are within this body. Help us to heal any divisions that are within our community. Help us to heal any divisions that are within our nation. However you need to use us, O oh God, we are open to your guiding and empowering spirit. Bring unity to our deeply divided nation and grant, O oh God, that we might find a way to be um, one people offering liberty and justice for all. We know there are deep difficulties and struggles in the nation right now that um, we face this pandemic and a resurgence of the pandemic here in this country, but also in areas around Europe and other areas of the world. We ask you to be with um, people who are entering back into lockdowns and restrictions um, on movements. We do come this day giving thanks and praise. Um, we give thanks and praise for the ministry that we are able to do as a people of God, both in, in this local community and through the work of the denomination and through the work of people of faith around the world. Thank you for the ability to participate. We especially give thanks for our prayer shawl ministry, um, which undergirds people's lives and holds them up in prayer. So thank you for all who serve in that capacity. So loving God, we place ourselves into your hands as individuals. Help us to recognize the gifts that we each have so that we might be willing to make an offering of ourselves for Christ's continued work. Be with us as a congregation and draw us together in unity. Grant us a vision for ministry and the skill and energy to put that vision into practice in the world. But most of all, this day, oh God, we ask, we ask the opportunity to give honor and praise to Jesus, and we offer ourselves wholly and fully in his name. Thank you, God. And let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we turn to hear a stewardship witness from uh, Marche. And so Marche, take it away. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you for the opportunity. Good morning, Fairhaven family. I am thrilled to have an opportunity to have a casual chat with you since we're virtual. I want to share some things that are on my heart and um, ask you a couple of questions. Have you seen God in 2020? Have you seen God during the pandemic? Most people would say, no, 
have actually never seen God. But think about it for a moment. Where have you seen God? Where have you felt God? Just for a moment. I'll share with you that during the pandemic, I did see God and I felt God. The pandemic allowed me to take walks every day walks early in the morning, walks in the heat of the day, walks late at night. I felt God. I saw God. I saw the flowers. I felt the wind. I walked in the rain. I had my puppy with me. She saw God too. She chased butterflies, she chased squirrels, and she was startled by the deer. I even started to cook. We had gotten to the point that we really didn't cook very much. We would order out or grab something quick and simple. But being at home, I started to cook. On June 22nd, I decided, since it was a rainy day, that I would cook a roast. I put the roast in the oven, relaxed, started to finish a book that I was reading for my book club. My husband was in the front of the house. He was either playing games or doing whatever, but on the computer. We heard a loud boom. We couldn't figure out what it was. I was close to the, to the kitchen, so I realized it wasn't the refrigerator that had fallen over. But whatever it was, it actually shook the house. We walked around to make sure everything was in place, and everything was in place. Nothing looked different. The electricity had gone out, but that wasn't unusual because it had started to storm. A few seconds later, my neighbor ran over and said, Marche, you've got to get out of the house. Your house is on fire. We smell nothing. We saw nothing. I grabbed the puppy. My husband grabbed the phone. I said, take the phone to the car. We got in the cars because the cars had fuel in them and we didn't know where the fire was. We got in the cars, we drove over to our next door neighbor and a few seconds later, the fire engines arrived. Three hours later, with one fire engine left and one news crew still on the lawn, these senior citizens realized that we were without shelter. Actually, we found ourselves homeless. We weren't sure what to do. And a woman from the Red Cross showed up and she said to us, the first thing you need to do is call the insurance company. And I think they may be able to help you. We did that, but surprisingly enough, as we sat in the car and made that phone call, we were calm, we were peaceful, and we were not panicked. Two hours later, we found ourselves at the Renaissance Inn. We checked in. We didn't even have a paper bag. We had nothing but each other and our puppy. 
we were still calm and we were still peaceful. My husband, which many of you don't know, who does not come to Fairhaven, looked at me and said, we are so lucky. We were so grateful. The next day brought many, many activities, activities that encouraged us. We got phone calls. We got text messages. We could feel prayers. I got an invitation that forced me to meet at Starbucks. And in the mid of a pandemic, I got hugs. We got fresh produce. We got gift cards that allowed us to eat. We got personal care items. Our clothes were washed. We got pies baked for us. We got drive-bys that said, we love you, we're here for, for you. Compassion and kindness are earmarks of Christianity. It's part of who Fairhaven is. Fairhaven is often referred to as a family. I believe it's family. But more than a family, it is a community of disciples, disciples who do God's work. I ask you to bear with me, but I also ask you to touch your heart. Just put your hand on your heart, just for a moment. What do you feel? I suspect you feel what I'm feeling. You feel warmth. You feel the blood of life. And hopefully with those things, you feel love. You feel God's love. More than that, as I look through Zoom virtually, I see God's love in each of you. Fair Haven is a ministry. It's a family. It's a community of disciples who encourages supports, and cares for not only their own, but our community. Fair Haven is a presence on 28. Maybe a small presence. I don't know how you feel about it. But the night of the 22nd, as we left Haddonfield, and drove toward the Renaissance, I looked to my left and I saw the steeple. And I realized the steeple, although it may need some repair, is an integral part of our community. It's an integral part of Darnstown. 
Fairhaven has a light that shines in this community. Yes, you take care of your own. I know that you've taken care of me. You've taken care of us. You've taken care of Jerome, my Chelsea, my family, our spirit. But Fairhaven is a beacon of light in this community too. It's a, it's a light that shines, it shines bright. We cannot allow that light to dim. We must pull together and work hard to make sure that, that light continues to shine brightly. In this year, 2020, the year of the pandemic, I have seen God. My family has seen God. We thank you. We thank Fairhaven. We love you. And because we love you, we can see the, the love that you share and the love that radiates even through Zoom. We see God, and I know that you have seen God. Thank you. Thank you, Marche, and thank you for being um, one of the faithful members at Fairhaven who continues to shine your light um, and this, the light of the Spirit through you. As we come to this time in our service, we give thanks for all who offer of themselves so that we can shine Christ's light um, from this place out into the community and around the world. Thank you for making your offerings and thank you for continuing to support Christ's ministry through Fairhaven United Methodist Church. Let us pray the prayer of dedication. Gracious God, it is a mystery that you have decided to work through persons like us. But we believe that you do, and that you have empowered us to be helpers. May every act of generosity in this offering be blessed by your strong guiding spirit. Amen.
friends, go forth. Go forth in the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.